Well, hello there, YouTube. Back with the Arrow Commander. Wanted to show you a couple of cool little details I added. Painted these things silver, which took a lot more effort than I thought. I was viciously attacked by the plane. That is, I think, the first time I've been cut by a prop. Maybe the second time. Out of all my experience with planes. And I'll explain in a moment how that happened. I rotated my wheels so that the oleos are pointed the right direction and painted them white. And then I painted a little touch of silver, which really helped the effect, I thought. And uh, painted the yellow wing tips. You already knew about that. And then I traced around my tape that keeps wanting to peel back so I can paint that in a little bit later on. Because uh, I didn't want this heavy electrical tape, black electrical tape on there. Uh, especially behind the center of gravity. This, this plane, there are times when I'm flying with the batteries pretty far forward. With the heaviest batteries, probably wouldn't be a big deal. But anyway, real quick update on flaps, guys. Flaps are not going to be happening on this plane, probably, without adding a second receiver. And that may be something we look at on this plane because it can handle the payload. And quick 10,000 foot view of how that would work is that I would pull power from our little X... Um, export which is powered but there's no signal that's going to come out of there no pulse width modulation will be coming out of that port you cannot activate it and i'll tell you how i came to that conclusion first i called horizon got the usual oh no you can't do that but they say that for everything because they don't want us to have any fun with this stuff that we buy religiously from them and so i did some searching and i found the programming cable instructions uh, included that the export had to be activated. Now, I think that's on just on certain receivers. Now, I, additionally, I don't even know if the programming cable would work for this thing, but it got me thinking. I remembered having these different stick positions that you'd have to hold, and then the plane would accordingly do certain functions. Well, incidentally, that's how I, I cut myself. I had the, the plane advanced into my hand. Uh, because you have to use the sticks to control it, and I forgot to unplug the battery, so it was my mistake. Anyway, luckily I didn't damage the plane at all. Uh, I think this nose cone might have popped free a little bit, so I just glued it back. One of the guys at Tech Support had recommended getting an AR6410 user's guide, which includes all the rest of the instructions once you get into the setup for gain adjustment for the three axis. And then also, there's two different functions, and I'll just show you what I tried, and then you can you can download this manual from the Spectrum website or from the Horizon Hobby website. So there's the export, just to show you where we were plugging in. Um, this is like off the Sport Cub S, if I recall, and it's in the middle on that one because that's got a brushed uh, brushed motor output. And you can actually change the way that these things work on the older ones. And later on in the manual, it outlines some different settings, and I mark them. Okay, so this is changing channel 5 to export, or export to channel 5. So it just tells you which direction to move the, the sticks. Mode 2 and mode 1 were actually wrong on this. I'm not sure why. And it's pretty obvious just from the description. Okay. And then there was one other setting. And I just printed the English instructions. This actually was like 72 pages long because it came with several different languages if you're not English speaking. Okay, so this was the other one. Change channel 6 to reverse to channel 2 for dual ailerons or reverse channel 2 to channel 6. So what that does is it takes... In this case, we have um, two different servos that are hooked up uh, for the left and the right ailerons. And sometimes you can combine the two through a Y cable, and then you can hook up your flaps on the other one, and thus needing to separate the channel. That was something that people did back in the day. Can't do that on this board. 
unfortunately. I even printed the manual in a handy to-go package so I can to-go right in the garbage can, which I'm gonna keep this actually. I keep all manuals and everything else too. So anyway, um, real big bummer there. So I figured I'd turn that frown upside down by working on my LED project for the Arrow Commander and I wanted to give you guys a quick update on where I am so far and we'll pick it up from where we are. So my instructions initially that I came up with was just a just a drawing that I found online and then I added my picture and the labels. Now a couple things I decided against are okay I'll show you what I got so far. Okay so I've just got an electronic speed control that died. <laughs> and uh, just have the BEC running. As you can see, this is a very bright white light. These are just the motor winding wire, which is very small. I think it's 32 gauge. And this red one has not been sized appropriately yet. And I have a green one somewhere over here that will only work if I wiggle it because the wires are so small that they just don't like to make contact in the breadboard. Um, and then I have this red that's a flashing LED and it drives a non-flashing LED. So I originally had thought about using that for an anti-crash beacon on the top of the tail and then on the bottom. But what I found later that this is an Aero Commander 500B configuration didn't really have, I don't think it had the bottom anti-crash beacon and I also didn't find these front facing white uh, taxi lights, it looked like a mustache on the nose of the plane on every plane and so I took that as an opportunity to not add more lights. Now the reason I chose to do that is because I'm already going to be adding lights up here in the nacelles that would be simulating the lights being on the landing gear. Well, these landing gear are, retract are not retractable, but they're removable. And so I don't want to be married to having the gear on there all the time. And I don't want to put lights here if not all these planes had uh, lights in that position. So I'll stick with the scale as I can keep it. And then out here I'll do my red and green like usual. I am definitely going to do a white taillight back here, but I am not 100% sure yet on this because it can be added later, and that is at the anti-crash beacon, I thought I had a 3 millimeter version of this. This is a 5 millimeter, meaning this dimension here. That's pretty big. So just to give you some scope and rationale behind that, if I had a 3 millimeter, okay, so this is five. So you see it's just over five millimeters. If it was three, it'd be significantly less. Okay, so there's three, and you can see that it'd be pretty close to, but just under the width of the tip of that. And so I would be okay with using a three millimeter, but a five millimeter is just gonna be too big. And I don't wanna waste those on this project because you just start adding a lot of weight. I'll be honest though, so far to date, this is going to be one of the lightest lighting projects that I'm going to do with the exception of the Cessna 182 because I just simply had less lights. The other reason I decided against the nose lights was because when this thing's flying at you, there's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six visible lights while when it's flying away, because of the structure of the wing, you may not even be able to see the nav light's very good, but you'll definitely only see the one white light. So I just thought, you know, it's going to look like a, you know, a fleet of aircraft coming at me, but then it's going to look like one light going away. So I said, nah, let's just keep it simple. And that being said, you keep it simple. Funny, right? <clears throat> anyway, so that being said, I wanted to show you guys, you always ask me what lights I use. Well, for the colored lights, I use these this time, which come from Hobby King, and they have red, white, green and then I think they have blue and yellow and so I just got the you know 
the red and green and then the white I'm not actually using the white I'm still using up another variety but I'll give you the part numbers here if you're curious the green is on top so it's 8940 that's green so that's green and then the the red ones are like this and then the white ones are this number okay it's very hard to see in the in the video but there's a little label and this is what they look like they're not covered in uh, rubberized coating like some of the ones I've used in the past which is actually nice for when you're trying to take these off and you can run these on 12 volts in pairs of three and then you don't have to add any resistors but in my case I actually take them off the strips to save weight for one thing and two, I don't like the place, uh, the spacing. I almost never like the spacing on these. Um, it's okay on a big plane, but it's not necessarily going to be okay on a small plane. So anyway, now that we got that out of the way, the other lights that I'm using are right here, guys. This came out of an industrial sign, okay? I don't know where you can buy them, so you can ask, but I'm just going to tell you that again. Um, what I do is I just take these and I just cut these little modules out. There are three lights in a bank, just like you have on those. The difference is they're very heavy duty, and they come on this board. This is a third. This is the center, and then there's a left and right. So there's a total of three lights, and there's these plastic domes that are in there. And so I literally have to cut this stuff up. It's a pain in the butt. It's that, it makes my hands sore doing it, but they're extremely bright and extremely small and they don't get hot at all which is awesome like this one here looks very bright you can tell from the way that the lights cast and I'm holding it and I can't even I can't tell any temperature on there at all and I'm using um, on this one 330 ohm resistor and that's against the BC voltage so 5 volts and it's not warm at all uh, which is really nice I can definitely not say the same for the red the green and the red will both take a little bit more and just so you know, I've got a 3S pack feeding my um, circuit here, but really it might not be a bad idea to use a 2S just to make sure 100% certain you're going to get the same voltage output. So basically, I refine those, those white um, light sets, and I take them down to here where I'm actually literally trimming the, the board away from the light. I've had a heck of a time desoldering these and so I've just gotten away from it. You heat them up so much and you destroy them. So if you don't mind having that little teeny teeny tiny bit of breadboard on there then you're fine. Okay. And so my last step before I install these is going to be to additionally and as I move this guys just so you know it's not breaking contact up here. What's happening is as I move it I'm breaking contact in the back. So it's actually just because it's on the breadboard. Those holes are designed to receive this resistor size lead, not this little dinky stuff. So where we are is we have one more. I took some advice from one of my subscribers or viewers. And I used a um, piece of masking tape upside down and then I held it down on either side. And I have plus and minus there, but I don't know what polarity actually is on these. It's too hard to see, so I actually just hook them up and then validate it later. So real quick, I'll just show you the process I'm doing here, and we will continue the video by installing the, the LEDs that are already prepared. So you just take that and straighten it out. You need to make a decision on how long you want the wire to be. And in my case, what I've been doing is I've been going um, for these. These are the ones that are going to go underneath, um, underneath the nacelles that are going to be forward-facing white lights. The, the one that's going to the tail, I pulled the length of the fuselage twice out of this wire. And you can see this one and that one, they're a little bit shorter, the ones that we're doing to the wings. Because what I'm doing is just going out to the, I'm just grabbing halfway. Because we need a positive and negative, guys. Okay. This stuff is not the easiest stuff to work with, I can tell you that. So I'm just measuring out to the middle of the fuse, okay? I don't mind if I waste a little bit. It's not a big deal. It's not super expensive stuff. Well, it's actually kind of expensive for wire. But it's super small, and it goes forever because it's just it's designed for windings. Okay, so get that onto your hook points so you keep it. 
set this out of the way. And I'm just using side cutters to cut it because this is a solid core wire, guys. And um, this this is like a varnish on here. It's not actually like uh, something you have to strip off. Okay. And so when they touch together, which this looks just devastating to people that don't realize this is coated in varnish, but all these wires touching are not going to short because that varnish is actually what acts as the protective coating that prevents short circuit. Okay, so let's move this out of the way a little bit. And the first step is, of course, you got to take your hot iron and uh, get the tip clean. Then you'll get your solder ready. And your first step is you're going to get a couple of points cleaned off. So just look at this red, guys. Do you see how there's a little red coating? Get a little solder, fresh solder, and watch what happens. It just eats it away, guys. And then you're left with the copper, which is exposed then to be used for soldering. Now, keeping in mind, since it's solid core, you don't get really awesome bonding. So you are dependent wholly on this um, very small contact area with the LED. But let's, let's just review. Oh, yeah, that's a really small contact area, too. Okay, so the first thing I do is I get those tinned, and I pull it kind of almost tight. And then I use another piece of masking tape to actually pull this down and hold it in position while we're working, which is kind of nice. And I didn't quite get as far back as I wanted. Um, so I'm just going to pull that through. Don't pull too hard on this wire. You'll rip it in half. Okay, so then this is uh, the tip cleaner. I don't know if you guys have asked. And then this is another type of tip. This is a mechanical tip cleaner. It's almost like a like a steel wool in the kitchen, except it's not steel, it's like copper, I believe. Or uh, brass. Okay, so we're gonna get this tip tinned. It's not very clean, there's a little bit of black stuff in there, so I'm just gonna wipe it off again, go back in for another dive for that, and then get some clean stuff. Okay, good. So now, I'm just gonna basically hold this where I want it to be. I'm just gonna heat this up. And I actually want to shut this off. It's making me nervous. Okay, so this time I'm going to do this a little bit different. Get a little bit of solder. Okay, so that's attached. Guys, I'm trying to make sure you can see this. Okay, so I gotta find the other end. Okay, so when you're done heating it, it's gonna wanna lift a little bit because the adhesive will, will back off. And who cares if you burn your masking tape, it's masking tape. Just get a little blob on there. And just let it flow. Um, okay, so I'm gonna bring you out so you can see the wide picture. Then you can take and make sure it's not super, super hot still, okay? And then support your wires with your fingertips, and you can pull those so you get a little bit of room there to work with. And take your cutters and cut the tips off. Okay, those extra tips are not going to be necessary because we're not doing more than one in this application. And we wouldn't use this type of wire for doing multiple lights. Probably would be a little bit um, too small on the current handling side of things. You might actually melt the wires together. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take, and just on this other end, because it's just a loop right now, that LED is short-circuited. It's not energized either, so it doesn't matter. Then I can just take and support, and then pull these straight. And once they're straight, then we'll go ahead and clean the tip. Get our solder off the reel a little bit. And then we're just going to basically take this solder and just warm up the tip there. 
Sometimes these things like to attract almost like a magnetic attachment. And you just kind of got to figure out how to deal with it. Sometimes it sticks so bad that it'll pull your work to your soldering iron. That's really annoying. Okay, so now I'll try to zoom in and give you guys a real close shot of that. Now, we don't know the polarity of this yet, but we're about to figure out. So we'll go ahead and plug this back in. I'm going to take another 330 ohm resistor. I believe these are eighth of a watt. Okay. Pull it tight. Toy it like a toyga. And then I'm going to go into the negative. See how this black wire is here? That's negative. And then the top one is positive. And the same is true here. I have wires that go underneath. And then these strips, they're all attached together vertically. Okay, so there's minus, whoops, so I'm sliding this into minus, and this is called a breadboard in case you guys weren't familiar with breadboards. I got this when I was going to high-tech automation robotics school, which is what I have a degree in. Okay, so that's going to carry our current back on the negative side. So now... What I need to do is I need to get those two wires. I'm just going to support the wire, lift the tape. And then we're just going to take one of each. One's going to go to positive, which can be anywhere on the positive area. And it doesn't matter at all. And then one needs to go to negative. Okay. And that's, I got it right. So I'm lucky. So while I've got it right, I'm going to go ahead and mark these. It's always a good idea to mark stuff if you can. One drawback in this application is that this reddish colored wire varnish makes it really hard to see the red, but the black is easy enough to see, and the black is really what you're concerned with because that's where you're going to land to your resistor. Okay, so we'll just mark both of those real quick. And you can see I've done kind of the same process on the other one, so it's, it's the same exact thing. The only difference is um, I had to peel off these resistors a little bit different. Um, then getting these resistors off of the, the sign, the billboard, backlight LEDs. Okay, so this is the negative one, so we'll go ahead and... Part of the reason I'm doing this now is to validate that I'm not going to have any adverse power conditions. Um... Like the lights aren't going to want to be the same brightness because there's too many of them or anything like that. That I have just miscalculations or whatever. I don't really do many calculations. It's very hard to slide those things into the breadboard because they want to just fold over. Okay, so now this is the red wire. So this should be the positive side. So it can go anywhere here or up on the other side. I'll probably do it here actually. So it's not turned on yet, which makes me wonder if I somehow screwed up. Oh, I'm in the wrong, I'm in the wrong pin. Okay, so we'll just get this slid in here, and then we'll go ahead and grab this resistor and jump over one. Okay, so watch. As I jump over one pin, there's the light coming on. Okay, so we can check for quality of light at this point, and they look pretty similar. And these are going to be my forward-facing lights that are mounted right above the, the landing gear. So it looks like the green is satisfactorily bright um, when it's lit up. But the red, as you can see, the red wire, the red one's always a pain in the butt. It's never quite as bright as you want it to be. And so what I need to do is I need to figure out what size resistor I'm going to use for that. And so I have a resistor in here now. That's this size, and I forget what size it is, so we're just going to use a multimeter to figure that out. And this will be a couple videos here, guys, so if you're expecting me to done on this video, you will be very disappointed. Okay, so just touching both of those together against the leads. Of course, your body is going to have some resistive value, so try not to touch both sides at least. Come on. The reason I don't want to let go is because I have the little jumpers in there to go into small things. 
Okay, so now we will see. Hmm, maybe it's big. Oh, so it's a thousand ohms. Okay, so this is a thousand ohms. I believe that's a quarter watt resistor. So we're going to go back to a thousand ohms. I've got these organized so that I can quickly grab them. So a thousand ohms is too much resistance to make that bright. Uh, but it wasn't hot either. So we're going to try a hundred ohms, which is probably probably going to be a big no-go, in fact. Let's try, let's try it anyway. So 100 ohms is going to go into the negative terminal strip, y'all. And then I just need to chase back to my red wire. Turning off my multimeter. Okay, here's my red LED. So I just need to jump down here and complete this. Okay, so it's on now. And that looks looks pretty good. Looks pretty good in terms of brightness level. It's definitely not as bright. And the red likes to get hot too, which is really irritating. Something about red takes more energy to be seen. So far it's doing okay. It's warming up, but it's not getting crazy hot. And usually if they warm up like that, then that means they're going to warm up more. Now on this one, the green one, oh yeah, it's just super touchy. So far the red LED is not getting overly hot. And you see how huge that resistor is, guys. It's going to weigh as much as, like, all the lights. So I hate to use a big resistor like that, but it is something that's going to handle some power. So I'm good with it. I think that's what we're going to do. Now on the green, currently we're hooked up with um, another light. So let's give that its own. Let's put it in its own area. So positive is fine. Negative is what we want to detach detached now so we will go ahead and probably put in I think we get away with 330 ohms and I have a few of those but let's see if 470 ohms would work just because I have this random resistor I like to try to use the same size every time it just doesn't work out that way because I only have so many of the same size. It's going to be a pain in the butt to buy resistors. I just don't want to go to DigiKey. Okay, so I've got that resistor on the negative wire. I think the positive side is giving me trouble here. Okay, there's our green. And as you can see, with the 400, it's actually probably hard for you guys to see. The green is significantly more intense. So I'm going to step down to a smaller size resistor, meaning I still am going to stick with 470 ohms. You know what? I should just try a 1,000 ohm and see how that goes. One of these little baby eighth of a watt resistors. Now, if you knew the exact specs on these LEDs, you can do math to figure out what size to use. And that's all hunky-dory, but it's all at whatever their rated voltages are, which we're not at the rated voltages, which is why we're doing this crap. We're at 5 volts. Oh yeah, that looks pretty good. It's a good match. Brightness, intensity. If I could go any smaller, like an 8... 80 ohms or 70 ohms it would be nice but this is warm it's not getting any warmer it's not gaining any temperature which is always a good sign so I think we have what we have so now what I need to do is just mark um, mark what size I need for each so usually the way I do it is I will grab a piece of paper or sticky note or something and then I just start going to town making notes. So in this case, I'll probably just tape stuff down. And 
and then you just got to label it. And if you don't label it, you're going to forget. You'll make a mistake. Guarantee it. So this is going to be for the green LED. So G. And we can at this point go ahead and terminate our power. Let's just validate my theory here real quick. Let's grab a 2S if we have one in here. We do have a 2S that sucks. So, I mean, 2S that sucks, but it'll be plenty good to run the power for this. Just to, you know, show you that it's going to be about the same brightness. Shouldn't have any issues as a result of 2S versus 3S because it's all being conditioned through a BEC, which is going to take the voltage from, respectively, 12.4 uh, or whatever this is at full charge compared to, you know, 8.6 or whatever it is. Okay, so we should be good there. Awesome. So now, um, we won't need to solder for a little bit, so let's save the soldering tip so we don't kill that. And we are about out of time, guys, so when we come back for part two, um, we'll continue this process, and we'll be installing some lights in the Aero Commander. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check the playlists, and you can follow these series, but I also include in the description below links to all the videos that would be relevant, including flight videos if they apply. Also, if you like this series, I'll be doing another one just like it for the L39, which is an awesome jet. It just needs some light so I can see it better while I'm flying it.